Hello and welcome to Do It Yourself Musician. Uh, today we're going to do a little mail call. I've got a piece of gear here that you already know what it is if you read the title of the video. <laughs> uh, this came uh, Royal Mail. It's all the way from the UK to the United States. It's from uh, KM Tech Designs in the UK. Uh, I bought this off of eBay at a reasonable price and let me pull it out and uh, I'll explain what it is when I get it out the package some instructions we'll put those aside for now all right and you can see right there this is a uh, MSX to PS2 mouse adapter and uh, it does exactly what that says um, you've probably seen before if you watch my channel that uh, all of the Roland uh, samplers the S330, the S550, the S750 I believe uh, the S760 and also I think the S770 all have uh, video output and uh, I'll show you a shot of uh, what those screens look like and the reason for that video output is just to make it easier to work with with the samplers because they're pretty in-depth tools um, you know involving uh, sampling and the manipulation of samples and sound um, so they give you uh, video output on those things to just just make the whole user, user interface uh, better instead of you know having the little LCD that you get in a rack mount unit uh, Now to go with that to control it uh, Roland uh, has a mouse uh, Controller it's called the Roland mu one mouse and if you take a look in this uh, s550 manual I've Got a page marked out here uh, You can see uh, basically the two controllers you can get, I mean, this is the uh, little diagram of the ME1 mouse and this is the RC100 controller unit here. Uh, and you can control the samplers with uh, either of those external control units. Um, the uh, RC100 is a great controller, I've got one right here that I use all the time. Um, this works works fairly well. Uh, the mouse allows you to move around a little easier. Uh, these ME1 mouse, mouses though are uh, fairly rare. They do pop up on eBay fairly often, though I must say I haven't seen one in the last two months or so. They generally go about 70 bucks. Um, so just in the uh, interest of trying to get something that maybe perhaps works a little uh, better to use a little bit more modern mouse technology um, I decided to try to get one of these uh, MSX to PS2 adapters and uh, if you look on the uh, the RC1 control here on the back they actually have a an input for the mouse if you can see that right there uh, the samplers themselves uh, the S550 S330 uh, both have the uh, input for the mouse on the face plate of the rack mount and the S760 if you uh, buy the uh, OP, OP760-1 board you'll have uh, this interface on that board and uh, uh, that ME1 mouse, like I said, is an old computer style mouse. It's MSX interface technology. Um, and this device upgrades that to a much newer, or let me rephrase that, newer <laughs> uh, style mouse technology, the PS2. And we all probably have one of these things laying around. Um, I believe that if you have a uh, PS2 to USB adapter uh, that functions normally uh, in your PS2 input, that this thing will actually work off that. So you could use this with a 
a modern wireless mouse. Um, I'll probably try that later, but right now I'm just going to use my uh, my uh, old PS2 mouse here. So let's take a look at uh, this unit. Let's go ahead and pull it out of the package here. Like I said, this is from kmtech.co.uk. Uh, in the UK, it cost cost me around thirty five dollars US. So if you already have uh, a PS2 mouse, you're not actually spending that much more money. Uh, you'll definitely save over buying the M1 mouse from Roland if you can find one. So it comes on this. Uh, this little controller board here. That's the input to the sampler and then of course the uh, PS2 style input there. Then there's a uh, crystal and some type of small chip on this but it's actually the writing on it's too small for me to read so I'm not gonna re <laughs> read out what it is. This is not a tear down video or anything. This is obviously something that they've uh, uh, KMT Technologies has put together just to do this to keep our old uh, MSS, MSS computers and samplers, rolling samplers running. And uh, here's a little user guide. And you can see what that says. And then it's a little bit of advertising you can read there. So if you got a Roland sampler and you, you don't have a mouse uh, or an RC100, um, I'll check this out right now for you and, and tell you if this will work. Any good with a PSA2 mouse. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and and try it first uh, on the S550 and see if uh, it will function in that and then I'll try it in the, the S760 see if I can get it to work on that one okay here we are uh, looking at my sampler rack here and you can see that I've got a uh, an S330, an S550, and an S760 here and uh, if you'll notice that uh, the S330 uh, and the S550 both have uh, external uh, control inputs on them and, and like I said it, that's to accept either the uh, RC100 uh, or the MU1 mouse. The S760 um, you need to have the uh, OP760-1 card installed in the back of the unit. It's on the, the back behind the, the uh, disk drive and that's where the connector is uh, for the mouse or the RC100. My my RC100 is actually uh, uh, set up to control the S760 right now so that's why I'm, I'm really interested in having a mouse control my uh, S550 unit. Okay so to start with uh, I've got the the adapter board here. I am going to try it on the S550 first so I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to do this on the camera. I'm going to plug in the mouse to the board and plug the board into the port on the S550 like so. Uh, and obviously as you can tell that this is kind of uh, an awkward setup here because uh, you know you have basically a, a circuit board at this point hanging out the front <laughs> uh, of your sampler um, especially if I use two of them um, that means I'm going to have one here and one here uh, but my idea is, is if this unit works that I'll probably run a run a, a special custom cable from here and here to a switch box that this uh, 
uh, unit will be in. I'll just make a custom enclosure for this so I can keep it out of the way and keep it protected. Uh, but before we get there, hopefully we'll figure out if this thing works. Here I have the uh, S550 boot disk. As you can see, this is the uh, CD5 version 1.02 disk. Yeah, I'm going to put that into the 550 and I'm going to hold down 1 on the control pad and uh, turn the unit on. I'm going to do that by turning my uh, power conditioner on. And uh, by holding down 1 when you turn the power on, you're setting the 550. Uh, to uh, front panel control mode. It's going to make sure that you're able to control it with the front panel. I want to do that first and then uh, show you how to set it into mouse mode because um, likely if you have one of these you're probably controlling it from the front panel so I want to show how to how to do that first. Um, okay so far we've uh, booted up the S550 uh, with the boot disk and we're booted into front panel control mode and we have our MSX to PS2 adapter installed and we have a uh, PS2 mouse plugged in that we're going to try to control the unit with and uh, the 550 has a component video out that is hooked to this television here uh, and you can see this black and white uh, display that it puts out. I've got it hooked into this old school 4.3 TV um, and we're gonna uh, put the unit into mouse control mode uh, from this master screen by uh, going to the front panel of the unit and hitting function, the function button. And when you do that you get this screen. Okay. And then you're gonna hit uh, the uh, command button and I'll just bring you up here before I hit it and uh, get the glare off of it. You can see that it's now giving you a uh, choice of controllers, either mouse or RC100. And uh, you would simply use the, uh, the arrow keys here to select that. You select whatever you want. I'm going to select mouse uh, and then the uh, Hit the execute, and it's asking to connect the uh, mouse to external control. Uh, then press execute. I'm actually gonna unplug it and replug it and see if that makes a difference. And I'm gonna hit execute again. There we go. Okay. I'm able to move around in here, but I don't actually have sort of a cursor, or excuse me, a mouse pointer. You can see the that uh, gray highlight moving around. If I if I go up with my mouse or down, I can go up and down and side to side. Uh, it takes me over. To these different values. Uh, it's interesting. I've never actually used uh, this unit with a mouse, so this is all new to me. <laughs> um, yeah, see, I'm on value right there, and if I just move up with the mouse, you can see that mode is highlighted now. Let me move it back down. And you watch, well, actually, menu. There's mode, menu, then. If it if it allows you to keep moving right, you see that uh, you see that gray bar in there. So that's what you get. Menu mode, and I click and brings up sub menu that I can go into, say like dist function, uh, pulled to the right. And I can do uh, dist load. Let me go ahead and try to actually load some sounds using a mouse. So I've got a uh, disc here with some GNL bass samples on it. So I'm in FD uh, floppy disk load, so I'm going to push the button there and uh, 
it's going to ask me what type of loading I want to do. Uh, blocks or sets or chains or whatever. I'm going to load the set. Yeah, and that's what the disc is. GNO Base Precision Mega Multi Samples RSB 5504. And it is now loading. And I'll go ahead and let this load up and then see how easy it is to get back to the play menu. Okay. Uh, that uh, floppy disk load is complete. Um, and it looks like, if you look carefully, you can kind of see where you are. Uh, I only have black and white output on this, so it's kind of gray. Probably appears blue on the video, but if I move my mouse left, I'm now in mode. I'm going to click that and go up to play and click and yeah, I'm in play mode. And I've got, uh, you can see I've got my base patches in there now. Let me move this across and see what I can do. Oh, here. And it counts down. So I can get base one by doing that. The scroll scroll wheel has no no control <laughs> uh, over it, but yeah. So there you go. Let's go over to out level and maha. Yeah, depressing. Uh, left click takes our out level down and right click takes our out level back up so it this uh, I'd say that this little unit indeed works it works with the s550 uh, so that's good for me let's uh, let's try it on the uh, s760 next all right let's try it on the s760 next uh, right now I've got it my 760 to set up to run off the RC100 and the video out and the way you go into controller modes uh, on the S760 is to hold down the uh, the mode button as you turn it on so uh, I'm gonna actually gonna zoom zoom the camera in a bit so you can see what happens when I want to do that so I'm gonna hold down mode turn it on and uh, hold it down till you see see it do Go, yeah, see, takes you into this screen with uh, different kind of uh, master control menus and you can uh, use your arrow keys over here to uh, set this up and uh, yeah, you got different things here, SCSI ID, uh, the boot drive. And number three is the controller, and you see right now it's RC100 and CRT. And uh, if I turn the value wheel, you can see I can change this to uh, mouse and CRT, panel and LCD, and RC100 and CRT. Like I said, I have the let me zoom out a little. I have the RC100 set up to work on it right now. The RC100 does have this mouse input on the back. Okay. So, I'm actually going to give that a try to see what happens then. So, I'm going to put the MSX converter in there. Once I get that set down. So, we've got that in there. Um, and I'm not sure actually whether to use it on RC100 and CRT. Uh, I'm going to try that first. I'm just going to keep it in the same uh, same mode um, to do that. So I believe you just uh, hit the mode key now. Uh, actually, exit. Yeah, then it's going to initialize them and put the boot disk in. Okay, the S760 is loading up, and you can see uh, here is the uh, 
screen for that uh, on its video output. It it is actually in uh, color, and uh, it just goes through its boot memory check and uh, checks for your SCSI drives and things like that as it boots up. So we'll let it finish booting up. And that's your master screen. And like I said, I, I uh, have it set up for RC100 control and I've got the uh, converting unit in it. So let's see if the mouse actually will run the sampler. Aha. Yeah, and you can see uh, on this, you've actually got a, uh, a bit of a cursor control there. It kind of does the same thing. It's moving these blocks around. But you can see I've got this... Uh, this crosshair is here that I can do things with. So let me try to, and it, yeah, it has the same behavior as left click volume down, left click volume up. Um, you can get up into these areas. It's a little, a little jumpy here. In this top row, I think basically you have. Uh, these are your sort of master uh, menu areas. Let's go to disk. Uh, yeah, just put put up a disk menu and click on load. And there's our load menu. We go down, select floppy disk. This is much, much, much quicker using the mouse uh, on this and not the uh, RC100. So let me. Let me go ahead and put a, uh, a 760 uh, sample floppy in here. And you'll see that, please wait, I didn't find anything. Uh, that's because there's not a volume on this. So if I go over to volume and click that, uh, I have, there's definitely patches on here. So let's. Yeah, and there's our patches, and and it lets me select them individually with the mouse, which is actually really cool. Um, or you could, I'm sure, hit all on, all off. Yeah, that works to control everything. Uh, go to load, click that, and you'll see that now it is loading. So there you go. We'll come back after it loads. Okay, it's finished loading the samples. Uh, so let's go up here and it should let me go to performance. You can see the crosshair is going up there. Performance is highlighted black. Click on that. Let's me go to performance play. Uh, then I can set up my patches here. Actually, not sure. Aha, that works the same way. So, so, let me go to number one here and I can right click to go up through the available patches here. Uh, that's always hat. That one should be percussion. Let me go down on channel one for that. Uh, channel three, uh, I've got bass. And on this particular one set up, I've got the Philocordia organ uh, on channel 6. And that organ's usually kind of loud, so I'll take it down. To about 50, so there you go. Okay, so this has just been a short little video uh, on generally how to use this uh, KM Tech um, MSX uh, to PS2 uh, mouse adapter with Roland samples. Uh, these things are available on eBay um, for about, uh, I don't know, $34, $35 US. Uh, KMTech.co.uk. Um, and so far, uh, it really seems to work. Uh, I, don't, I don't see really any problems with it. Um, functioning it definitely makes a regular PS2 mouse uh, control the Roland samplers so you don't have to buy the uh, the $60-$70 MU1 mouse 
uh, when they're available on eBay. So uh, go ahead and check this out if you're running old rolling samplers and uh, uh, should work for you. And I will report back uh, after I've used this a little while. Thanks for watching.